We love living in the mountains of Costa Rica. You know, it's beautiful to get out there and just enjoy the peace and the quiet. But maybe you're a city slicker and you enjoy the nightlife. Maybe the traffic noise doesn't bother you. Well, today, why don't you come along with me as we take a walk right in the suburbs of the city and get an idea. What is it like to live in the traffic, the noise, and everything that goes with city living? All right, so good morning. Today I'm going to do something just a little bit different because as you know, Rebecca and I tell you that, hey, we're mountain people and we don't want to live in the city. But you know, there are some people that, uh, well, do want to live in this city. They're just city people. Well, you know, there's a, a few things nice about living in the city, but today, well, we're actually living in the city. And so we're kind of really nice in this, uh, it's kind of a little family environment where this uh, nice family has uh, their father built two or three little places right here and they um, uh, rent them out. So we have this furnished apartment in the city or really in the suburb uh, of the city. There's a really nice or popular suburb called uh, Barrio Boston. So Barrio, if I'm pronouncing that right, is really just a uh, community. Well, we're in the community just past Barrio Boston in a community called Perigoso, if I'm pronouncing that right. I think I'm, that might be the closest word I got right in Spanish <laughs> anyway. We don't like the city because there's lots of noise and there's just lots of people. And for me, it feels like everybody's living in their own penitentiary because there's gates and bars and, and all of that. But hey, today I'm going to take you a walk through and let you kind of get a feel of what is it like to live in the city? Because we do this every morning. Every morning, Nikki, uh, Cootie, and I, we go for our morning walk and every evening we do the same thing. And Hey, if you're the type of person that likes to walk, well, let's get a feel for what it's like to be dab smack in the city or in one of the suburbs of the city of San Isidro. So let's take a quick look and see uh, where we're going. Where are you going? You ready? You ready? Come on, let's go. Let's go. Are you ready? Are you ready? You want to go walk? You want to go? You want to go? Let's go. Let's go. Like I said, it feels like we're in a penitentiary and uh, they've got a great big gate. But the one thing is, you know, most houses like this and it does feel very safe. And as you can see, uh, that house, same way, kind of feels like a penitentiary. And of course, everybody's got gates and uh, everything is really secure. And I normally go this way as we go for a walk. But this morning, I want to take you right across the street because, as I said, we live in Barrio uh, Perigoso. And uh, this is a little community. And, you know, if you're talking to this to, to people and you're asking for directions and they tell you that it's at the town center or near the town center, well, unless you know what I'm about to tell you. And of course, that's one of the disadvantages of living in the city is you got a lot of traffic noise. You know, sometimes depending on where you're at, well, you have the droning of the traffic noise that's constantly going by, but we live right here, right across from the town center. And every town center, uh, almost every town center, has this huge soccer field where they play football and it's almost always right across the street from the Catholic Church. And uh, of course, then by, that means that uh, there's gonna be speed bumps. And so now the traffic noise is a lot louder than normal because of course you hear the vehicles constantly, 
you know, slowing down to go across the speed bumps, then speeding up, and it's the constant, you know, noise of the traffic. But anyway, we're going through the uh, soccer field here. And so if you're a city person and you like community or you like activity and you like people, well, on the weekends, mostly on Sunday, there's usually a lot of people in the soccer field. You know, they're playing and gathering and doing things. And I say usually Sunday because in Costa Rica, in case you don't know it, most people work six days a week. And usually Sunday is their only day off. And of course, uh, we're in the soccer field, as you can see. There is the community church or the Catholic church. And then right behind it is the school. And so that is the Escuela of Perigoso, okay? And so this kind of just gives you an idea. There's the community church, as you can see. And, uh, and this area does have a nice view. You know, you can see the mountain range out there, which is quite pretty. One of the advantages of living in this city is that uh, you're only a hop, skip, and a jump. You're just a few minutes from, well, fast food like Mr. Polio. And uh, there's the store right up there, which is the Supermercado and Licorice. I probably ain't pronouncing that right. But in other words, it's the supermarket and the liquor store right there. And so everything is kind of really close, you know? That's, a, I guess, a huge advantage if you want to live in the city. However, in the city, there's lots of noise and uh, lots of people, uh, and lots of dogs. All right, come on. I believe that bus was about to run me over. And uh, you know, that's what's crazy in Costa Rica is the traffic doesn't slow down for pedestrian traffic. Whew. Uh, pedestrians don't have the right of way in Costa Rica. You can forget that. But anyway, uh, Here's where I normally go, and I just wanted to take you and let you see where we're at, right, a, right across from the town center. But my normal morning walks start right here. So let me grab my cup of coffee, and we're gonna go for a walk. All right, with coffee in hand, uh, let's close this gate. All right, and uh, let's go for our walk. And this is where we normally go with Nikki and well, sometimes Cootie. Cootie almost always goes with us, but she's in a new area, so she's very cautious. So uh, anyway, you know, uh, here's uh, maybe a cultural difference that I'll bring up. Maybe I'll bring it up after a while when the dogs aren't so loud. Now this is quite interesting because here we are dab smack in the middle of a suburb, but um, obviously some here has a whole lot in the suburb 
dedicated nothing but a bunch of chickens and ducks. Of course, there's not a blade of grass in there. And so, not only do we have the dog noise and the traffic noise, but hey, at uh, 11 o'clock at night, 2 o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning, uh, when sunrise, you get to hear the roosters crowing. <laughs> and as you can hear, uh, Costa Rica has gone to the dogs. Everybody has dogs. And lots of them. So. So as you can see, it seems like everybody uh, has huge gates and everybody is locked in. Well, some are prettier than others. Like this one here is really quite attractive. So you don't, I guess, feel much like it's a penitentiary, but it's still just a great big old huge uh, prison block with bars and wires and razor wire all over the place. Hello, Poochie, Poochie, Poochie. And uh, very few houses don't have a big fence like this one, which is rare to see. What you doing, Nikki? That's my girl. But like I say, Costa Rica has gone to the dogs. And, uh, well, I guess it's a good thing. Costa Rica is a very dog-friendly country. Now, why is it that it's dog-friendly? And, hey, this is just my opinion. You know, Costa Rica is a poor country. It is actually a third world country. I don't say that to be mean. It's just a fact. And uh, some people say, oh, you shouldn't say it's a third world country. It's a uh, uh, less developed country. Okay, whether you call it less developed or whether you call it a third world country, they both mean the same thing, okay? And it just means that, you know, the infrastructure is not where it's at. The majority of the people in the country are poor. And because of that, everybody has a dog or multiple dogs because it's a very cheap alarm system, okay? And so they have uh, lots of dogs. Now in the city, um, it seems like since most of the places are indeed uh, behind prison walls, I like to say, or are behind, uh, you know, fences and gates, it seems like their dogs are, uh, you know, running loose, which is nice because, you know, in other places like in the country where there's not so many high fences then their dogs are often on these little bitty three foot leashes so of course i got a leash you know around my neck here you know in the event there's a reason for me to put nikki on the leash i can but a lot of times they go and buy a leash and they tie one end of that leash to a fence post and that's what the dog might spend the majority of his life on and it's sad, but uh, it's it's just, it's part of being in Costa Rica. Ooh, you're a big boy, huh? And this is a really nice place. I kind of like this place. Kind of like the design and build of it. It's uh, definitely not typical Tico. Uh, and this area, uh, Pedregoso, seems like it has, uh, you know, some different type building. But there's definitely a lot of typical Tico style houses here. That's very typical, like I said earlier, for you know, most dogs in the country, they just live on a chain or a rope like this poor fellow here. And of course, it's probably for his own safety. He has a peg leg and probably because at one point in time he got hit by a car. But anyway, he, hopefully he's, he's on a longer chain than most. 
Now we're right next to some humongous building. Of course, that's part of living in the city. And uh, it's some company. I see the trucks go in there, but I have, you know, they deliver something or another. There's an old place right there. And now uh, I'm really on a dead end street, so there's not a lot of traffic on this street. And hence the reason we like to walk this road so that uh, Nikki and Cootie can take care of business. And that's generally what we do every morning and every evening is I enjoy my coffee. So we're gonna walk to the end of this road, but I'll kind of turn the camera toward uh, me so that we can uh, kind of see eye to eye for a moment. But as I said, hey, you know, living in a city is not for everyone, definitely not for Rebecca and I. And, uh, but we're here temporarily, because as you know, our uh, the place we was renting sold. And so we had to quickly find something and uh, we were hoping that we would move from that house to where we are going way, 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 way above the mountains of Buenos Aires, okay? It's very, very remote. But anyway, uh, since we don't have internet there yet, we have to have a temporary location and we're in this temporary location. But hey, it's nice. Uh, I guess you get used to some of the noise and I don't think I will ever get used to taking Nikki for a walk and um, having to listen to all the dogs. But hey, that's part of their security system in Costa Rica. We have lived in the suburbs one other time and we was living in a community called Morazan. It's a popular area, especially for foreigners and gringos or really not Morazan so much as the little community right above it, right there next to it called Cabradas. Or Cabradas, I might be pronouncing that right. And I'll show that to you on your map. And in Cabradas, as you can see right here, it goes right along the river. It is a nice little old spot. And uh, it's really cool, it's uh, high, and it's really a, a nice area. However, when we was living in Morazan, well, guess what? We had people steal from us. It seems like a lot. I think we had uh, several propane tanks stolen there. All of my tools were stolen when I first moved in because we were moving stuff in and so they kept an eye on us. It was like, oh, there's some gringos moving in. And I put all my stuff, it was inside, but it was only a screened in area with bars. and. Well, they cut the screen and they put a pole in there and drug all of the tools to the edge and hauled off with a couple of thousand dollars worth of tools. So, hence the whole reason crime is not terrible in Costa Rica, but petty theft is terrible. There's a lot, a lot of petty theft. And, you know, it's pretty much said that um, if you leave it out where they can get it, you didn't want it. So, that's just a part of uh, knowing about Costa Rica, especially the city. Hence the reason we do want to live in a country where there's not a lot of neighbors and there's not a lot of people. I kind of like this house, and if you take a close look at that window up there, uh, I bet you I can guess the name of the child who occupies that. It looks like his name might be Axel, and he's letting everybody know he can write. <laughs> Now, one of the benefits of actually living in the city or suburbs near the city is that, uh, hey, there's uh, you know a few sidewalks, which is something you typically don't see in the countries or in the remote areas of Costa Rica. Hey, another huge advantage of living in the uh, cities or suburbs is that you can get really great internet because there's lots and lots of people. Then, you know, you have lots of suppliers to choose from. And where we're living at, well, we can now get a hundred megs of internet down, you know, and there's five up. I think you can buy packages with more upload, but most people don't need it. And it only runs about uh, 30,000. Well, let's see, I guess that hundred megs of internet is running about 
about 65, 70 bucks a month for that kind of internet. Now nah, that's fairly good price, okay? Considering that I was paying a private entrepreneur $105 a month for only six down, not a hundred, six down and three up, and I rarely ever got that, and the service was horrible. I want to mention, in a city the size of San Isidro, you really can find a lot of rentals. However, you really need to have boots on the ground to find them. Let's turn left right here and look at a really nice apartment complex. This place has covered parking for your vehicle and is safely behind gates. It looks really nice with a lot of rental units. But as many times as we've looked for places to rent, this place has never come up on any websites. Okay, let's finish up our walk. Now this road here, once I uh, have turned the corner from up ahead, it's a little quieter because it's not, I guess it's not houses packed side by side and uh, not nearly as many dogs, so it's a little bit quieter. Now uh, I have to admit that I think, I think the dogs are getting used to our daily walks and so they're not as loud as they were the first few days that we were here. But as you've witnessed, there's a lot of dog noise and that's just part of being in Costa Rica you do have some pretty nice views because well even though this is the city or the suburb it's a uh, it's a mountain city so the altitude's a little higher and uh, it which means it's typically a little cooler hey didn't you bark at us when we came by has a lot of dogs and I don't know if they just own a lot of dogs or if they dog sit I don't know but they've got a lot On a cultural side note that you need to be aware of, in the United States we have planning and zoning commissions. It keeps people from putting up a shack or parking a dumpy trailer next to your nice expensive house. It protects your property value. In Costa Rica they don't have planning and zoning commissions. So you could build a million dollar house and someone else could build an ugly shack with 15 barking dogs and a bunch of chickens and roosters to wake you up every morning. 
these are things you need to think about when buying property in Costa Rica. And home sweet home. So now we can ease back in to our very own penitentiary. All right, I hope you have enjoyed today's tour of what it might be like to live in the city. You know, uh, if you're a city person, well, hey, it's really not bad. There are quite a few advantages for me. Well, the only advantage of living in the city is having high speed internet. So you can get high speed internet uh, and you're close to restaurants, you know, so we go out and get a bite to eat. So uh, for me personally, there's not a lot of advantages. But for other people, there's lots of advantages because you're close to schools, you're close to the hospitals, you're close to shopping, you're close to everything. Now, where we were at in Rivas, that wasn't bad because it was only about 20 minutes away from the city. However, um, you know, you, you still had to go that little way, but almost every little tiny city that's kind of, you know, 10 or 20, 30 minutes away from the city, they all have their own uh you know, shopping area, and they have, you know, little bitty uh, stores and uh, vegetables, and, you know, you pretty much have everything you need, all of your basics in every little bitty community. So, it really is not bad at all. Uh, so, hey, if you enjoy living in the city, well, that gives you a tour of what it would be like if you lived in the city. If you would, if you think it'd be great for you to live in the city, hey, why don't you put a, a comments in the description below. Let me know what you think about it. And you know, this place right here seems like it's really a nice place to rent. The people that live here uh, seem to be really nice. And so what I'll do is I'll put a link to their place inside the form, because hey, we'll only be here temporary. They've got two places for rent. They got one that uh, is a one bedroom and it's a little bit bigger, a little laundry area. It's uh, 200,000 kloners a month. And then uh, the other one, I think, is 150,000 kloners a month. It's a little bit smaller. But hey, uh, if you're a city type person and you want to live here, I'll put a link inside the forum so that you can check it out in the event it's available when you're looking for a place to live in the city of San Isidro.